by Land Rover above and beyond. One hundred eight diamonds in each one of these championship rings to represent the drought between titles and yeah, presented to all the players and the staff on the field prior to this one and the Dodgers and everybody back home in Los Angeles are pretty sure ready to move on and get back to just playing baseball. 2017 is here. 2016 is now officially over. Joe Madden of the Cubs said that this is the moment they really turn the page. Raise the banner on Monday night. Ring ceremony tonight. The rings, by the way, seventy thousand dollar value. Wow, seventy grand. So I'm sure they just handed them to the club and said, "Go ahead and go tuck these back in my locker. Sure, they'll be fine in there." Back in the safe, they need to go. <laughs> so the Cubs took the opener three-two on Monday night, and they sit at five and two. They've won three in a row. Dodgers, meanwhile, have dropped three of four after the three and one start. Two games remaining on this road trip to begin in Denver continues here at Wrigley Field. John Lackey goes for the Cubs tonight. Brandon McCarthy counters for the Dodgers. And then, if, and then the finale tomorrow, which will be a day game, it'll be Hunt Jin Ryu for the Dodgers and former Dodger Brett Anderson going for the Cubs. for the Cubs to take the field. Let's check in with Alana. Well, guys, it's a bit chilly out here right now, 45 degrees. It's expected to go down to about 42 degrees, but I can tell you that the Dodgers are prepared. Alex Torres, the head clubhouse manager for the team, I asked him, what other preparations do you make with weather like this? He said, we have a lot of different things packed. Thicker long sleeves, ski masks, beanies, extra jackets. The trainers have hand warmers to divvy out to the players if they need them. Hooded fleece, just a bunch of different things that these guys are trying to stay warm if they need to. Of course, they do have heaters in the visiting dugout here at Wrigley Field, so it is cold, but they're doing everything they can. You can see the heaters there on your monitor. Those have been out all day long, even since we arrived today at the ballpark here at Wrigley. It's chilly, but hopefully uh, they can get a win out of this one. That'll keep them warm. Yeah, I think so. I was talking to Bob Guerin about those heaters. He said they're so loud. And the dugout is so small that you can't even hardly hear the crowd. Really odd sensation with those heaters on. And here they come behind John Lackey, still with those gold numbers and letters, and they plan on wearing those for this entire opening week. Dodgers starting lineup tonight is brought to you by Honda and Andrew Tolls back at the top of it for the Dodgers with a right-handed pitcher on the mound. And it's Corey Seager. No Justin Turner, at least in the starting lineup, and actually Logan Forsyth at third base. Justin Turner's quad injury, word is it's minor, and he is available to come off of the bench and pinch hit tonight, but not starting for Dave Roberts. And then in the middle third of the order, Gonzalez, Grandal, and Peterson, Utley and Puig, and then Brandon McCarthy. And it's all against John Lackey. Vanderbilt in the second final year of his deal here in Chicago 38 years old now in his 15th major league season He's going to attack if you can believe this statistic or not 75% of the time since 2015 two out of the first three pitches he throws are strikes Especially to right-handed hitters, he rarely attacks him. He has a completely different MO against righties and lefties. He tries to get ahead and then use his breaking ball. Signed a $32 million deal prior to last season, and even though he's at 38 now, and in the final year of that deal, he said it's more likely that he will pitch somewhere next year than that he'd retire. And why not? Another good season for him last year. Another season where he contributed in the postseason. Something he's done as much as anybody among active players. 23 postseason starts. That's number six all time. And again, number one among active pitchers. Been good against the Dodgers in his career. A lot of that coming in his time with the Angels. He spent the first decade of his 15 year big league career before going to Boston and then St. Louis and now Chicago. So after
after all the pomp and circumstance, we are now ready to go. Closed captioning brought to you by Wiener Schnitzel. Andrew Toll stands in. John Lackey comes home, and off we go with strike one. Actually said that it was downstairs. Greg Gibson did so. Ball one. Ten minutes after the scheduled first pitch. Toll's making his first start of the series. Taking inside, two balls and no strikes. So left-handed starter on the mound on Monday. That was John Lesker. So Tolls came off of the bench eventually when Franklin Gutierrez went down with the injury. A 2-0. And Tolls hammers the ball to deep right field, and it is gone. A leadoff homer into that gusting wind. And on a night with a Cubs celebrate a world championship, Andrew Tolls quiets the crowd right away. John Lackey arguing with the home plate umpire on balls and strikes already. Usually he throws a lot of strikes, but only one out of three of these pitches was called a strike. But Andrew Toll said, no, we're not going to call it a strike. We're going to call it a home run. There's a lot of power in that small statured body. It's Toll's second of the season and a heck of a start for the Dodgers. Corey Seager now taking a strike. There were only a handful of balls during batting practice that were flying out of here. But the way the wind is gusting. Dave Roberts and the guys around the cage noticing that if it was elevated much at all, it wasn't getting out. One ball and two strikes. Corey Seager usually aggressive. An RBI double in the opener Monday. And waits on a one-two. And a liner towards left center that will split the gap and bounce to the wall. And Corey Seager follows the Tolls homer with a double. Enough of the pomp and circumstance. Dodgers say, let's play ball here in 17. High breaking ball. Corey stays on it really well. The kind of response you'd love to see the Dodgers have here after having to endure the ceremonies on a really cold and rainy Monday night as the Cubs raised the banner and then Dodgers salt in the wound who's losing that game in the ninth inning. And then had to watch the Cubs accept their championship rings before this one, but promptly jumping on John Lackey. Hogan Forsythe looking at strike one. Forsythe back to back multi hit games. After that 0 for 13 slide, finish the homestand and begin the trip. That rides inside and the count evens. So for John Lackey, similar to his start against St. Louis last Thursday, gave up four runs total. Three of them came in the first inning. Offense wound up bailing him out. Six innings and got the win. The big Texan comes on one one and spins it off of the edge. His breaking balls, he can throw the slider and the cutter, and that's the tough part about facing Lackey against right-handed hitters. Because he can throw one that kind of stays on the corner and then he can sweep it off. Two balls in a strike and Forsythe foul tips it into the mid of Contreras two and two. Already battling the elements here in the first inning. How cold is it going to be late in the game? Yeah about high 40s right now. I think Alana said during the pregame scheduled to get down into the low 40s tonight. The runner at second. Like he takes a peek and steps off. So what's the word on your voice? You had a latte this afternoon? Yeah. 
a little bit. Don't have milk in your coffee anymore. <laughs> you don't feel sick or anything, though, I right? Don't. You feel no. fine. You just sound less than fine. Thank you. There's a 2 2 coming from Lackey. We'll get through it. And Forsythe cranks it foul. We'll do it again. Logan Forsythe in his first year in a Dodger uniform. Former Padre, former Ray. And the Dodgers using the same versatility that was his calling card early in his career to plug a hole tonight with Justin Turner on the bench. Takes it low and accounts full. Well, right here, man, on second, trying to hit the ball to the right side, but really trying to protect. Cole started the game with a homer. Seeger doubled. And now on 3 2, Logan Forsythe takes ball four. So the first three Dodgers have reached two on with nobody out. And the Cubs defense is brought to you by Keck Medicine of USC around John Lackey. They were historically good defensively a year ago. They've got a two time gold glove winner at first in Anthony Rizzo. Young man's got a lot of range, very soft hands, and is a good thrower of the baseball also. And this Cubs defense was outstanding last year. Adrian Gonzalez taking a strike. Yeah, when you look at batting average on balls in play, they were 30 points better than any team in baseball. It was a big part of their success last year, but one ball and one strike. It doesn't bode well for the ability to repeat. When you see a number like that, an absurdly low batting average on balls in play against. It's only natural that that number will come back closer to the lead norm. Which means less help for this pitching step. Zalos fends it off and it's one and two. And really surprising the Cubs shift almost the least in baseball. Which is interesting because when you think about shifting, one of the lead guys in that movement is their manager, Joe Matt. Adrian's homer 10 times in this ballpark in his career. Still looking for his first long ball of this season. The one two. And he got it. So Lackey with his strikeout for the first down. You don't usually see this from Adrian Gonzalez. He goes back to the bench shaking his head because he knows he picked on a bad pitch. First and second with one gone, and it's Grand All. But a good game in the opener. A couple of hits in a walk. And a half hearted swing and a miss, strike one. Ferris wants it inside. Lackey with a long glare at second and an 0 1 pitch that's popped foul. And it will reach the seats 0 2. That was a mistake. They won the ball down and in. He left it right there for Yasmani. The target and then the elevation of the pitch. Yasmani cut it loose, just missed it. Lackey known as a guy that. Pounds the zone, says here it is. Try to hit it. Velocity's been just about the same his entire 15 year career. And that's even though he's dealt with some injuries, gone through Tommy John. Trying to get on the same page with his young catcher, Wilson Contreras. And you can say young just about everywhere on this Cubs roster. Now, Mora, who's sharing time in center, he's 22. Schwarber, Russell, starter and left, starter at short, 
They're both 23. Javi Baez is 24. Contreras, who just made the mound visit, 24 as well. And the reigning MVP at third, Chris Bryant, 25. Here's an 0 2. And it's fouled off. Cubs 103 wins a year ago. Beating the Giants in the NLDS. Of course, the Dodgers in the NLCS. And then coming back from the 3 1 deficit in the World Series to beat the Indians in seven. Two on with one out in the first. And Lackey to Grandal with an 0 2. And he got him swinging back to back K's on elevated fastballs after the first three reached. Ball to Adrian Gonzalez is a cutter. This is the two seamer that runs away from Yasmani. As a hitter here in the on deck circle, you see Jock Peterson there. You're checking out the sequencing. Yasmani might have thought that ball might cut in. Lackey trying to limit the damage here in the first inning. The lone run scoring on Andrew Toll's leadoff homer. Peterson trying to keep the line moving. Reached in all seven games so far. Takes strike one. Had a hit, scored a run, and the 3 2 loss on Monday. Lackey's 0 1. Down and in. One ball and one strike. John Lackey earning his third ring tonight. One in 2002 with the Angels, one another with Boston in 2013. And now with the Cubs. He's home with a 1 1. Peterson leaves that one up. Two balls and one strike. Not only does Lackey have three rings, but he's been the winning pitcher in the clinching game twice. 0-2 when he was a rookie with the Angels, and then in that 13 season in Boston. Two and two. Always been very gritty. Never really can tell that he feels bad about his stuff. He just continues to come at you. The only thing he feels bad about is sometimes the umpire's calls. <laughs> he didn't care letting them know. Second visit of this first inning from Contreras. He said that he's a pretty laid back guy normally. But pitches with a controlled rage. Same guy that he's been his entire decade and a half in the majors. Two on, two out in the first inning, and a 2 2 count on Jock Peterson. Lackey's ready. Here he comes. And Peterson with a good take to run it full. Attempting a backdoor slider, backdoor cutter, but pulled it inside. Jock took it easy. Seen over his career, more and more good takes. Weren't many of those towards the end of his rookie season. Seeger is second and Forsyth at first to get a head start. Went upstairs with a fastball to get Gonzalez. Did the same against Grandall. And against Peterson, he goes down low with a breaking ball, and Jock stays alive. Jock hit with bases loaded, no out in the first game here in Chicago. Didn't get the job done. I'm sure that memory is right there in his head right now, trying to look for a little redemption.
That one's low and inside, and Peterson's earned the walk to load the bases. Second free pass of this inning issued by Lackey. And the Dodgers with an opportunity here to put a crooked number up against Joe Madden in the first. So only get in the start today is the trickle down of Justin Turner being out of the lineup. Logan Forsyth moving from second to third and Chase in there starting at second. One for 12 on the young season. Looks at a fastball that splits the plate for strike one. Seeger doubled. Forsyth. And Peterson both walked. John Lackey would look at this as a minor victory if he was able to escape with just one run. On the third pitch of the game to Andrew Tolls. And a one. That's over the outside edge on two. Last year, Lester, Lackey, and Arietta had the bases loaded 39 times. No one last year ever got a hit. Were they lucky or were they that good? Talked about the defensive efficiency. Some would say that those numbers show some luck. Thirty-second pitch of the inning finishes off Utley, and the Dodgers leave them loaded here in the first. They get one on the solo shot from Tolls to start the game. His second home run of the season, into the teeth of the win, and the Dodgers with a first inning lead. In a one nothing lead as Joe Madden's lineup gets ready to come out for the first time. It's brought to you by Honda. Kyle Schwarber has been at the top of it all season so far. Then it's the MVP Bryant, Rizzo, Zobris, Russell, and Hayward in the middle. Contreras bats seventh. They hit the pitcher eighth as usual. And then John Jay starts in center and bats ninth. Against the 33 year old Brandon McCarthy, who was sharp in his season debut. Wednesday against the Padres two runs over six innings and picked up the win to get off to a one and zero start this year. Another guy who likes to throw a lot of strikes Brandon McCarthy will attack and that's when he is pitching his best. Schwarber climbs in here comes McCarthy and it's fouled off strike one. The Schwarber 
when you look at him, you don't think typical leadoff hitter, but as the game is changing, what a typical leadoff hitter is changing as well. It's a high on base percentage guy. In 2017, that means a leadoff guy. A little bit in, one ball and one strike. 353 career on base percentage for him. And you see the numbers so far this year. One of the best in baseball. Again, it misses barely two and one. And to put that in perspective, the league average on base percentage around 320. Schwarber again in his career above 350. McCarthy's 2 1 pitch, a breaking ball low. Twelve-year Major League veteran pitching for his sixth different team and pumping a 3-1. That's in there. The count is full. Brandon working on the edges really well, just missing. Kyle Schwarber leading off for the Cubs by striking out on a fastball at 93. The Dodgers defense tonight is brought to you by Keck Medicine of USC and Logan Forsyth making the start of the hot corner his second so far this season again Justin Turner's injury not considered serious and is available to pinch hit tonight but getting the day off in this cold weather from the field when a guy comes over from another club to Logan coming over from Tampa Bay you think oh he's flexible it's great he can play a few positions but we didn't know how really good he could play third base. Chris Bryant takes a tailing fastball for a strike. Third base is a force that grew up playing. So all he's been primarily a second baseman in the majors. This is where his background is. Murphy Zola. A little bit outside, one ball and one strike. MVP of the National League now in his third season. Right on a 1 1 pitch. Checks his swing on strike two. McCarthy struck out Schwarber. And he misses away to Bryant, 2 and 2. Spent his off day yesterday taking batting practice at a park in downtown Chicago, hitting home runs into the Chicago River. Huge group of fans around, all kinds of television reporters. Texas one foul, it stays two and two. It was a Red Bull event. He's affiliated with Red Bull. Quite a scene in his Cubs uniform, had his batting gloves on, his backwards hat, they had a cage around him. I hope they had a boat out there collecting they had, the balls. Yeah, they had five or six kayaks that were all going after the balls that were landing in the river and then tossing them to fans. A breaking ball and the count is full. It's the only player ever to, in succession, win the Golden Spikes Award as the top college player, the minor league player of the year, rookie of the year, and then MVP in successive seasons. McCarthy's 3 2. And he's walking. Let's go down to Alana. Guys, the way that Dave Roberts described Justin Turner's quad issue is really that of a Charlie horse situation. Justin himself said he felt a lot better today, but as you mentioned, Joe, he's definitely not going to be in there defensively today. If need be, if the situation dictates, he could come off the bench in a pinch hit situation. Justin Turner feels confident that he will be back in the lineup tomorrow. You don't want to rush it with this uh, cold weather tonight. No need for him to be in there. Now that was the slide right before he came out of the game, Alana, and uh, he said afterwards that it was actually on a diving play that he made defensively that led to, like you said, more of a Charlie horse. Then what was it first? I think worried some folks that it was some kind of muscle strain. Ball one on Anthony Rizzo. 
Rizzo off to a bit of a slow start here in 2017. He's five for his first 29. But one of those five hits, the game-winning single against Kenley Jansen in the ninth inning on Monday. McCarthy deals one all. And a bouncer past the mound. That's Forsyth flipping to second one. And Seeger to first, dug out by Gonzalez. A double play to allow McCarthy to face the minimum here in the first inning. And the Dodgers, after one, have a 1 0 lead. Dodgers got a leadoff homer from Andrew Tolls in the first inning, but squandered an opportunity for a bigger inning, leaving the bases loaded against John Lackey, who wound up striking out the side. A homer, a double, and two walks in the inning. Led to 32 pitches thrown by Lackey, the most that he's thrown in the first inning since 09. Back in his Angels days. Dodgers brought seven to the plate in the first, so the eight hitter Yasiel Puig to lead off the second. And he goes after the first pitch, strike one. Clearly, the scouting report on John Lackey is he's going to attack the zone, and the Dodgers are aggressive. Yasiel Puig with his new philosophy get a good pitch. You're going to get a good pitch in the first three. Here's an 0 1. And he bangs one into right center. That's a base hit. Hayward over to cut it off. Puig holds on. Hayward, one of the only guys that can match Puig as far as an arm out there on right. Puig knew it. But has a leadoff single here in the second. Yasiel had one of the best batting practices I've ever seen him have today. And I didn't want to jinx him before the at bat, but this line drive was what he was doing one after another after another. Most of them during batting practice, the left center, center field, but here with a little more velocity from Lackey, right center. Snaps an 0 of 9 for Puy. And a bunt situation for McCarthy. He pokes it foul. Brandon had a hit in his first start. Here will look to move Puig into scoring position for the top of the order. an 0 1 and it's bunted in the air <laughs> Rizzo tried to barehand it but couldn't get it and it's 0 2 
Well, Chris Bryan, the third, is pinching in. Rizzo getting a good jump over there, knowing McCarthy is going to bunt. And this one, it's just overcharged, the aggressiveness. And then this one lands in fair. It'd probably be a base hit over his head. Rizzo not just a gold glove winner last year, but a platinum glove winner, which means he was the top regardless of position. Another try from McCarthy. And unable to get the job done. So he strikes out trying to bunt for the first out of the inning. And back to the top for Andrew Tolls. We take a look at the Carl's cam. Go back to his first inning at bat. A solo home run right through the teeth of that win. Blowing into a lefty is a sweet spot, and Andrew Tolls makes him pay. Did a great job lifting that pitch down from his ankles. On his second at bat. Blackie starts him with a well placed fastball, strike one. So Andrew's from Georgia. And absolutely loathes cold weather. Well, the coldest game that he's ever played in is while he was at Tennessee. There was a game where it even snowed in Knoxville. On a one. Takes it up and in. Contreras back to first, but Puig in there safely. And a ball and a strike on Tolls. So the coldest weather he's ever felt playing a baseball game. And Said he was completely bundled up, trying to protect himself from the cold. And then he got hit in the calf by a pitch. This one not quite as cold as Andrews dealt with, but. Not warm. It's not LA weather. Mid 40s tonight. The SEL better watch out getting tagged on his right arm before his foot gets back in. Tolls in the air to center. That's down a base hit. So he's two for two with a home run and a single against Lackey. And they're at first and second with one gone. One low pitch, he gets down and hooks it over the right field fence. This one he slices back towards center field. A Land Rover performance spotlight looking at Corey Seeger and Chris Bryant. Two of the top three in the MVP voting last year. Of course, Bryant won it. Daniel Murphy of Washington finished second. Seeger, who had a higher batting average, but not as many homers or RBIs, came in third and one rookie of the year. They're the last two. Rookies of the year in the National League. Seeker fouls off the first one, strike one. Hoping to make the same jump Bryant did, going from rookie of the year to the most valuable player. Two on with one out in the second, and Seeger takes ball one. Seager makes the jump to MVP. The Dodgers might make the jump over the Cubs. A little bit motivation the last few days here with the flag raising and the ring ceremony. Something you want to be part of. You were saying that your ring ceremony is special of a day as, as you have. It just. Uh, there's no pressure. It's all over, oh. and you get a piece of jewelry you get to wear the rest of your life that signifies a world champion and a, and a lifelong dream. You have yours on, and you're probably a little bashful about it, and they're handing out these $70,000 rings tonight, but special nonetheless, right? You might have to hold that up to get it closer to the camera. Yeah. It's pretty special to get to wear that. And it's been too long that 1988 on the bottom is uh, we need to get that to 2017. Yeah we need an update don't we. Ball and a strike on Seager. And he takes a fastball for strike two. Couldn't help but shake that thought while we sat here and watched the Cubs ceremony down in the field. How great would a ring ceremony at Dodger Stadium be. 
A one two tails in strike three. All five outs have been recorded via the strikeout for Lackey. Dodgers a three for three when he pitches from the windup. Right here now he's in the stretch. He's made some really good pitches to get out of jams. So it's up to Forsythe. Dodgers left him loaded in the first. First and second here with two gone. But you can toll his both single. Here comes Lackey with the first one. Rides up and in, ball one. Forsyth walked his first time. Second start at the hot corner so far this season. Position that he grew up playing and played most of his time at Arkansas. That drops in, strike one. Really, his time playing primarily second started to begin when he was in the minors in San Diego system because Chase Headley was at third in the big league club. And at the time, considered really high flight, top flight player. Two balls, one strike. Logan said he was stubborn, a little hard headed about it at first. Came around to the idea of doing anything that he needed to to help his chances of becoming a major leaguer. And it's exactly what opened the door for him. Four years as a utility man. Now in his third year as an everyday player. Fights this one off and the count evens at two and two. So Lackey again trying to pitch his way out of trouble. His 2 2. And Forsyth takes an elevated fastball. The count is full. Already 50 pitches, though. So while it's not showing up on the scoreboard yet for the Dodgers, perhaps into that Cubs bullpen much earlier. Runners are going. Night. Andrew Tolls score from set first on a double. Lackey making sure Puig can't get too he too good of a head start. There they go. Here it comes, and Forsyth pops it up. Rizzo will battle that win to settle under it and finish the inning. Dodgers have stranded five through two and lead one nothing.
kinds of renovations here at Wrigley, but one thing that's not changed is the visiting accommodations. This is the long walk down from the visiting clubhouse, which sits just above the concourse, actually. And it's like a maze down there to get down to the tiny visiting dugout. Ben Zobris to lead off the inning against Brandon McCarthy, and he drops in a breaking ball, strike one. In my day, this was cement, so you got to hear your spikes crunching on the cement, and you thought about the guys that had broken that cement because it was concaved out. Ty Cobb, Babe Ruth, all the greats. And it's one of the great walks in sports to come from a locker room. And we're still on it. And then to see the field finally when you come out that little tunnel there to the left. McCarthy home with a 1 1, and that tails in to get him ahead. One ball and two strikes. Lots of changes here in Wrigleyville, but they have kept the charm. New home clubhouse, state of the art. That one's a little bit inside. It's 2 and 2. So they moved the old home clubhouse back, built underground outside of the stadium. That's where the new home clubhouse is. And they turned the old clubhouse into a batting cage. Hard hit up the middle, base hit in the center. So Ben Zobris has the first Cubs hit of the night to open the second inning. Alphabetically, Ben Zobris was the last one to receive his championship ring, and it just so happened that he was the MVP of the World Series. So he got a very loud ovation during the ring ceremony. So he got the $70,000 ring tonight. He got a 50th anniversary Camaro for being the MVP. And I think a lot of times you hear guys win those cars for being MVP, and then they kind of just get put in the garage. He actually is using his Camaro as his everyday car. Addison Russell stands in. And McCarthy gets strike one on him. Said it's a cool reminder for him that he accomplished something special. Just a reminder of that MVP honor every time he hops in the car. The 0 1 pitch. That's a little bit up. Ball one. He can get a new car now. He can look down at his hand. Yeah. See the ring. Right. A pretty good reminder. The go ahead RBI double in the 10th inning of World Series Game 7. 2 and 1. It was against Brian Shaw, the Indians bullpen. And Shaw threw Zobris five consecutive cutters. Zobris watched the first three, fell behind one and two, fouled one off. And then hit that double down the line. A 2 1 Russell hits it hard to short. Seeger goes to second one, and the Dodgers have turned two double plays in as many innings tonight. 6 4 3, and they're wiped clear. Really good approach on this ball by Corey Seeger going down with one hand. You go, oh, you're supposed to field all the ground balls with two hands, you know, in case you miss it. Well, when you get to the big league level, down there by your toes when the hop's going to be there, it's got to be one hand. Really, Chris Woodward, the third base coach for the Dodgers, he talks about catching it with one hand when the ball's below your knees. So they're empty with two gone, and here's Jason Hayward. He's off to a pretty good start this year for the Cubs. After spending the offseason completely overhauling his swing. Now, last year was his worst career season. It was one of the worst seasons by any regular on any team in decades. One ball and one strike. So he moved to Arizona this offseason to be closer to the Cubs facility and the hitting coaches, the Cubs mental coach. They worked every day starting in early December. Make his hands more relaxed, lower his hands. Hits it softly into the shift, and the inning is over. That's Corey Seeger positioned on the right side of the bag. And thanks to the double play ball, McCarthy again faces the minimum.
Sacred Rebel. Experience the power and toughness of Ram at your local dealer. And by Jack in the Box. Try the double jack combo for just $4.99. Only at Jack in the Box. The view from inside the scoreboard here at Wrigley Field as Adrian Gonzalez comes to the plate against John Lackey. Well, third of the Dodge order in this inning. Scoreboard went up in 1937. And early the renovations have gone through recently, the first major one since then. That's a fastball strike. It was originally painted not green, but like a reddish brown color. Had to redo the paint green because hitters were complaining about a glare off of the original color. Nothing in two on Gonzalez. Added that clock above the scoreboard in 1941. And can you believe this? It's never lost time. The 0 2. And another strikeout for John Lackey is six. The 1937 set of renovations didn't just include the scoreboard there, but the current iteration of the bleachers. They've added on to them. Here's Grandall. And there's strike one. But the initial structure for those bleachers went up. 1937, same time they planted the ivy on the walls. They'll come in about a month from now. Breaking ball slipped in the air towards the seats, and Lackey's had nothing in two. They planted the ivy down at the bottom of the walls and then had wire, copper wire running up to the top to allow the ivy to grow the entire length of the wall. They've planted new ivy a couple of times. But for the most part, unchanged since 1937. Upstairs, ball one. Lackey pitches one, two. Just outside with a fastball, ball two. The next one, and that bounces, and Grandall's worked it full. Asmani is strikeout victim his first time. Trying to reach in front of Peterson. Grandall, the healthiest he's been in a long time. That's 27 home runs last year, despite still battling through some nagging injuries and come with the everyday grind of catching. He's still coming back from the shoulder injury. Suffered late in 2015. On 3 2, Lackey's got another strikeout. Seven of the eight outs that he's recorded have been K's. Better watch out for the breaking ball down and in, but here that backdoor cutter. So hanging on that outside corner, you're getting a read late, whether it's going to be a strike or a ball. Peterson walked against him his first time. Been an odd start to this game for John Lackey. Home run on the third pitch by Andrew Tolls, then a double. He's walked two, but only one run. Using those seven strikeouts and using a breaking ball to get strike one on Peterson. He's now been on base in all eight games that he's played in this year. The 0 1. Way up, one and one. Coming fastball in, but just gets underneath it. I don't think that was a purpose pitch. The one one offering, and Peterson cuts through it at 91, and it's one and two.
Lackey looking for his first one, two, three inning. Peterson goes after a high fastball and a pop up behind the mound for Russell. And Lackey's got a one, two, three frame. Middle three on a cold night in Chicago. And the Dodgers in front one, nothing. The Dodgers with a 1 0 lead. And time now for the Coors Banquet Timeless Moment. Today in 1962, Pete Reichert in his major league debut tied a big league record by striking out the first six batters that he faced against the Reds. Went on to a 13 year big league career, a couple of different stints with the Dodgers. That one to open his career, and then he came back later on in his career in the early 70s. Wilson Contreras begins the third for the Cubs against McCarthy who's faced the minimum through two and Contreras drags a bunt towards third. It's an infield single. Perfectly placed by the Cubs catcher to start this inning aboard. It was a breaking ball. Those are easy to bunt on the ground but the direction part was excellent. It's do or die for either guy and you're not going to throw him out. It's a catcher running. But it's a very fast catcher, perfectly executed bunt. So McCarthy's allowed a base runner in all three innings now, but has had a double play ground down each of the first two innings to wind up facing the minimum. Lackey are likely up there to sacrifice. Swings away, strike one. Former star Juco first baseman hit above 400 his freshman season at Juco ball. Had 13 home runs in about 60 games. This time he squares and pulls it back in a ball. Texas Angels took him in the second round out of that junior college after he started to pitch lays this one down well McCarthy has one option it's at first Utley covers into second goes Contreras it's very nice but you don't have to get it to third or to first if you deaden it correctly Right out there in no man's land.
So Lackey able to do what McCarthy couldn't when Brandon came up in the second and advanced the runner into scoring position. And it's John Jay to bat. Jay in the nine spot. Former Cardinal, former Padre, first year with the Cubs. Looks at strike one. Scored the winning run on Monday night after starting the ninth inning with a double. Figures to share time in center this year with Albert Almora as they try to fill in for the departed Dexter Fowler. Breaking ball is hit back to the mound, and McCarthy's got Contreras caught in a rundown. Forsyth will tag him out. Into second goes Jay. So a nice play by McCarthy, and they get the second out on the bases. It was a very nice play by Brandon McCarthy, the comebacker, and then he's got him hung out to dry, but you got to make sure you get it to an infielder so they're going to have time. So right about here, he runs at him, gets him going the other way, and now it comes that way. Logan Forsythe sees the batter runner coming to the second and tries to get the tag quickly, but couldn't do it in time. So one six five officially and with a man at second and two gone back to the top and Kyle Schwarber. Lone strikeout victim first time through the order for McCarthy. One and all. So McCarthy getting the strikeout and then seven consecutive ground outs. That's the guy McCarthy's become. Reinvented himself a few years into his career. Bought into advanced stats more. Found the value of attacking the zone and living down in the zone to induce ground balls. He's low here and it's 2-0. Oh. Another thing that's been good about Brandon, coming back from Tommy John surgery this year, Away from the Tommy John surgery, the breaking ball has gotten a lot better, the curveball. And the velocity's back up to where it was before Tommy John. He was 92 or 93 last year in his first year back, but he's back to averaging about 94. On 2 all Got away with one there to Schwarber, 2-1. I think Yasmani was crossed up <laughs> or forgot what he put down. Got a smile on his face through the mask. 2 1. Tailing fastball misses. Three balls and a strike on Schwarber. With Bryant on deck. It was a walk to Schwarber that opened the door for the first run on Monday night. Came after Puig's air and right, and a ball that he was able to track down but couldn't squeeze. Dangerous pitch here, 3 1. And he's walked it. The second McCarthy walk, and they're at first and second with two away for Bryant. Planning weekends with friends and family has just become easier and more fun. Choose to attend five Dodger games, either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, starting at $20 a game. For more information and tickets, go to dodgers.com slash mini plans. So the 25-year-old Bryant with men at first and second and two away in the third with the Dodgers in front one nothing. Second overall pick in the draft in 2013 behind a guy the Astros took, Mark Appel, that still is yet to debut in the majors. That's low, ball one. Appel since been traded to the Phillies and has been in AAA three consecutive years now. While Bryant, who went second, is now in his third year in the majors, but an all-star each of the first two years.
Two on with two out in the third, and McCarthy home with a 1 0. Outside, 2 0 on Bryant. Jays at second. Schwarber's at first. And Bryant, who hammered 39 homers a year ago, yet to hit one this year. Two and one. Really cold start. 0 for his first 13, but has bounced back just fine. Eight hits over his last four games. First and second with two gone and a 2 1. Bryant hits it hard foul, and McCarthy's a strike away from getting out of this. Good job by Brandon McCarthy getting back in this count. After he'd fallen behind 2 0. McCarthy's ready and his 2 2. Bryant in the air to center, but not deep. It's Puig. And a ball drifting all the way over to right, and the inning is over. McCarthy able to pitch around a couple of base runners and a 1 0 lead through three. Garcia Parra, Jerry Hairston Jr. We hope you're enjoying Dodger baseball on KTLA. Let's take a look at the Dodgers calendar. After Thursday's game, the Dodgers head home for a six-game homestand. You can see Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday's games right here on KTLA and Sportsnet LA. Spectrum, Sportsnet LA, your place to catch the Dodgers 24-7. Get Spectrum TV, the best ticket in town. Joe and Oral, back to you. All right, John Chase Utley leading off the fourth inning for the Dodgers against John Lackey and taking ball one. Took strike three called to finish the first with the bases loaded. Dodgers stranded five over the first two as Lackey is caved seven. One and one. Those seven strikeouts through three innings. The most in Lackey's career through three. And that is a career now in its 15th year. Here's his 1 1 to Utley. It sinks into the knees, one ball and two strikes. These guys both debuted back in 2002. Utley with the Phillies, Lackey with the Angels. 
I've both spent long periods of time with the teams they debuted with. That one disappeared, and Utley is struck out for the second time. One gone. So up comes Puig, who singled his first time to snap an 0 of 9. That 0 of 9 had corresponded with when he got caught trying to steal third at Coors Field. Saw some sagging in the body language following that. Might have carried over some into some ensuing at bats. Healthy caught and a miss, 0 and 1. What does seem to have a nice spark in his step tonight? Blackie home with an 0 1. It's outside, ball one. Two and one on Puig, who started his own charity this offseason. Calls it the Wild Horse Foundation. The goal is to help underprivileged youth. That charity gaining steam for him. Checks his swing on strike two. And the holidays went down to the Dominican Republic, worked with Manny Moda and his charity, donated some supplies and gifts to needy families down there. And as his first fundraiser play, planned already for this season. It'll be a poker night at Dodger Stadium in late May. A 2 2. And another strikeout for John Lackey, his ninth. Goes up the ladder right here. Fastball down. No, it ends up up. Now, Sale did a nice job laying off the sliders away. And just got beat by the fastball. Brandon McCarthy. Only two guys in the Dodgers lineup that have not struck out. We're only in the fourth inning. Tolls at the top, two for two. And Forsyth 0 for 1 with a walk. He popped out. Ball and a strike on McCarthy. And Lackey not necessarily known as a strikeout guy. We talked about his propensity to just fire it in the zone and see what happens one and two what's happening so far tonight is he's missing a lot of bats with what he's throwing up there two and two lackey's career high for a game is 12 strikeouts. He may look at it and say, well, he's going to easily get that. It's only the fourth inning, but he has thrown 76 pitches. The 77th is low. McCarthy's worked at full. McCarthy walks. The third one issued by Lackey. Takes a few pitches to strike somebody out, and then when you have those walks, that piles up that pitch count. So nine Ks, but three walks now. Andrew Tolls has two of the four Dodger hits. A solo homer to start the game, and then a single. Starts him with an off speed strike one. Said during batting practice today, I can't even feel my hands, I'm so cold. And he joked around, that's kind of a problem in this sport. Ball and a strike. Swings away, lofts a fly ball to left center that Schwarber camps under, and the Dodgers are finished in the fourth. John Lackey, nine strikeouts over four innings, and we go to the bottom half in a one nothing game.
Brandon McCarthy doing a nice job today, getting some ground balls. I think some of that dirt got in my throat. These double play balls are outstanding. Nice infield play. And Brandon getting the job done, even when he's falling behind in the count. This play right here, outstanding field in his own position. And he has done a nice job attacking, but when he has fallen behind, getting back into counts and making his infielders work. Trying to even this series at a game apiece after the Cubs took game one 3 2 trying to move above 500 here in the young season. Anthony Rizzo to lead off this inning against McCarthy. Three four and five for the Cubs. Sobrist and Russell to follow. Tailing fastball caught the corner strike one. With the Cubs down in the World Series three games to one. It was one hour before first pitch of game five and Anthony Rizzo delivered what was part pregame speech and part kind of a comedy routine naked checks his swing one ball and one strike so this is in the clubhouse I'm glad yeah well <laughs> thankfully right hopped up on a table started pumping the team up with a Rocky theme playing over the clubhouse speakers. And they won game five. That's outside two and one. So of course, if it ain't broke, game six, another naked rah-rah speech. And you know what happened before game seven. Leader of this Cub squad, the guy that raised the championship banner Monday night. Two and two. It was appropriate that he was the man to raise the banner when you consider the fact that. He lived through some of the really low years here in Chicago. Came in in 2012, and of the 53 guys oral that played for the Cubs that year, he's the only one left. A 2 2, and the count's full. That's why Theo Epstein got such an ovation here. Yeah. The builder. He leads off the fourth with a base hit to left. Anthony Rizzo with a single. And we go down to Alana. Guys, Rizzo is just the second left handed hitter in franchise history to record multiple 30 homer 100 RBI seasons. Billy Williams did it three different times as the Cub Rizzo in 2015 and last year. On top of that, Anthony won the gold glove and the platinum glove. Joe, you were mentioning that earlier, along with the silver slugger. Must be the last name. It's got to be. Yeah, them Rizzo's. And the only left-handed hitter, Alana, with 30 home runs and 40 doubles in a season in Cubs history. He's on to begin the fourth. Ben Zobrist looks at one that tails over the outside corner for a strike. Tobris, who turns 36 next month in his 12th Major League season, second year with the Cubs. Waits on an 0 1. And a breaking ball is in there, nothing in two. Back to back world championships for him with different teams. Won a World Series with the Royals in 2015, and then here in Chicago last year. One and two. Do the one two again. It's a local guy, relatively speaking, from here in Illinois, in a tiny town, Eureka. Rizzo at first to begin the fourth. McCarthy ready for a one two pitch. And it's back to the mound. There's one. And for the third time, there's two. The third double play in four innings for Brandon McCarthy and the Dodgers. 
PFP pitchers fielding practice. Brandon McCarthy right here gets rid of this ball in a hurry, feeds it accurately to Corey Seager. Very routine after McCarthy does the feed. And that when Brandon McCarthy is at his best is what you get. A lot of ground balls, and in this case, it's helping him limit damage. Three times the Cubs have had the leadoff man on, and all three times he's been wiped That's off. Fine. No, I'm not going to. One and on Addison Russell. That's a curve in there, and it's one and one. Russell grounded into one of those double plays his first time up. It's one of the nine ground outs that McCarthy's induced out of the 11 outs recorded. And he loses his bat up into the first row. I don't think she wants to give it back. She said, can I keep it? Probably not, right? A lot of what happens here is uh, it might give you another bat that's not a gamer because the guy really does want it back for this at bat. I don't know how she ended up with it. I think she was kind of in the fetal position when the bat went flying by and somehow wound up in her lap. She will end up with a souvenir, believe yeah. me. Here comes McCarthy with a one two. And that's outside two and two. So the 23 year old shortstop of the Cubs in his third full major league season waits on a 2 2 and hacks it foul. All star for the first time last year. Some big hits down the stretch in the postseason. Including a grand slam in game six of the World Series. Lifts this ball in the air to left, but he got under it. Andrew Tolls is there. Brandon McCarthy has faced just one more than the minimum through four innings, thanks to three double play ground outs.
Lackey in tonight's outing gave up a solo homer to start the game to Andrew Tolls. Then he gave up a double to Seeger, then a walk to Forsyth. But was able to pitch around that and has done it with a strikeout. Nine of them total as he misses with ball one to Corey Seeger. And those nine K's through four innings, only three short of his career high for a single game. It's 1 0. And Seeger takes ball two. So with the nine strikeouts and the three walks, what he's also seen is an elevated pitch count. Already sitting at 83 pitches. His 2 0 to Corey Seeger. Is hit on the ground is second. That's Zobrist. That's out number one. Take a look at the Morongo Casino Resort and Spa Slow Mo Cam. Some of the success he's had with those keys tonight. He's at great location, especially to the left handers on that outside part of the plate, but then the breaking ball every once in a while has been good. Had the comebacker on the inside and gone up the ladder with both his two seamer and his cutter. And that 32 pitch first inning has settled things down since. That there was his first ground out that he's induced. And he tills it in for a strike on Forsa. Logan walked his first time and then popped out to first. On a one, that's strike two. Several times we've seen Lackey and Contreras not totally on the same page. Contreras, the young catcher, first season as the featured guy. He's had to work really hard to develop that chemistry with all of his pitchers. On 0 2, they're coming inside and missed with it. Forsyth poked it foul. I know as pitchers, though, you guys appreciate at least the effort that a guy like Contreras has been putting in. Yeah, you know, when I got young catchers back there, I actually had body language signs with them to tell them what to call. So what they were putting down with their fingers was just confirmation. One and two. You make sure you don't give your signs when the hitter's looking out at you. Right, I was going to say, how do you do make sure... have a sure shot of the bullpen or no? The hitters don't know the signals. You're the one delivering them. When they put their head down, that's when you give it to your catcher. On the ground to third, backs up Bryant. And a pair of ground outs to begin this inning. Friday night fireworks presented by Denny's returns to Dodger Stadium this Friday after the Dodgers take on the D-backs. Likely Kershaw Granke, the matchup in that game. Stay after for a spectacular fireworks show set to the theme of Billy Joel's greatest hits. Getting you ready for Billy Joel's appearance at Dodger Stadium in May. Two up and two down, and it's Gonzalez. Adrian takes strike one. Dodgers have four hits in this game, but none since the second. Lackey home with it all one. And court foul, nothing in two. Fifteen year veteran against a fourteen year veteran. Contreras wants it down and away. Lackey rocks and fires. And Gonzalez is able to smack it to short, but Russell gobbles it up and three ground ball outs in the fifth for John Lackey. The Dodgers in front one nothing halfway home at Wrigley.
Connected LA is brought to you by your Southern California Toyota dealers. Get incredible deals on a spacious new Sienna. Toyota's leading the way sales event. That's a shot of the first night game at Wrigley Field. 8-8-88. Eight, eight, Although officially it wasn't until 8-9-88 because that first game, which was against the Phillies, was called after three and a half innings because of rain. Jason Hayward begins this inning with a base hit to right center. Off of Brandon McCarthy. Hayward's first hit of the night and the leadoff man on for the fourth consecutive inning for the Cubs. We got to set up the double play ball. Yeah, it's gotten three of them already through four innings. Wilson Contreras had a bunch single his first time, the second of his young career. 24 years old, made his big league debut last June. On the very first pitch that he saw, he homered. Four hits for the Cubs, all of them lead off singles. McCarthy out of the stretch, gets strike one. On Contreras, converted third baseman. He was in the minors as a third baseman and was bored one day during instructional league a few years back. Had the day off as the third baseman, so went down to the bullpen, happened to see the catcher's gear laying there, thought he'd throw it on for the heck of it, and started catching guys. And there was a scouting director that happened to be in the park, saw him fooling around like that, and said, hey, do you actually want to give this a try? And Wilson said, I guess so. So they put him in the game that day in the sixth inning, let him catch a few innings, and the rest is history. The backs up on McCarthy and misses inside one and one. Say the rest is history like it was simple from there, but a couple of years ago, this guy went unchosen in the Rule 5 draft. Cubs made him available to any team in baseball. Nobody wanted it. Hayward runs on a pitch that's cranked to deep left center field. Back goes Tolls at the wall with room. And back to first goes Hayward. Boy, the wind is just knocking that ball down because it was properly struck. This park never plays fair. It plays either really good for the hitter or really bad for the hitter. On this day, it's really bad for the hitter, especially if you hit it to center field or left field. Anything that was really elevated during batting practice was getting knocked down. The lone run in this game came off of Toll Solo Homer, but that was of the line drive variety. Didn't get up above the bleachers necessarily where it could be knocked down. The man at first and one gone. McCarthy against his counterpart Lackey. First checking on Hayward. Hayward runs, swing and a miss, throw to second, offline, and Hayward stolen second. Good jump by Jason Hayward. The swing by Lackey keeps Yasmany back when he goes to throw. And I think that little bit of, there was no interference because there's no contact, but that's not easy to throw when somebody gets in the way of your vision. So the tying run in scoring position for the Cubs in the fifth. Lackey, a guy that can swing it a little bit. Sacrifice bunt his first time. McCarthy wants Grandall to come out. Yasmani says, no, we're actually on the same page. Figure it out from here. Well, they're using a different sequence of signs with a man on second. Yasmani might have used the sequence that was when the man was on first. That's in there, and it's 0-2. There's a whole thing during the postseason last year with Grandall catching Kershaw. 
Or it looked like there were several times where they weren't on the same page, but it was exactly what you mentioned. Changing the sequencing of those signs with the runner at second. And Lackey looks at strike three right down the middle. Second K of the game for McCarthy, second out of the fifth. Brandon throwing a lot of confidence in that two seamer away to righties. That is excellent movement all night. So it's up to John Jay for the Cubs here in the fifth. It's John a Fielder's choice his first time. Hit it right back to the mound. Cubs have had some opportunities in this game. McCarthy thus far pitching around them and begins him with a sharp curve for strike one. Cubs are 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position tonight. And when you include Monday night, 1 for 16 in this series. The 0 1. Boy, that's got some incredible tail for strike two. That's outside to righties, inside to lefties, and it is really coming back. Guy that started in this stadium made that pitch very famous, Mr. Greg Maddox. Ball one. Greg was in the uh, Dodgers system last year as a special assistant, now coaching. At UNLV. With the runner at second and two gone. Here's McCarthy's one two. And he's again pitched around a leadoff single. A fourth consecutive inning. The Cubs put the leadoff man on but have nothing to show for it. And it's still one nothing. celebrate the life and legacy of the late great Jackie Robinson of course Jackie Robinson's number is retired all over Major League Baseball and the Los Angeles Dodgers are going to be unveiling a statue of Jackie Robinson the first 40,000 fans in attendance on Saturday will get a Jackie Robinson replica statue and the unveiling of the actual statue guys is going to be live on Sportsnet LA beginning at 3 p.m. an amazing list of attendees are expected to be there Jackie Robinson's family his wife his daughter, one of his sons, the great Vince Scully, will be in attendance. Sandy Koufax, Don Newcomb, of course, Tommy Lasorda. I know a lot of us will be there as well. A very special moment for all baseball fans, and particularly Brooklyn Dodgers and Los Angeles Dodgers fans. All right, Alana, can't wait for Saturday. Grandall digs this one out. 
Then pops it up to short for Russell and the first out of the inning. 70th anniversary of Jackie's Major League debut. In the 55th year of Dodger Stadium it will have its very first statue. So well deserving and such a great choice. And the statue will depict him in his rookie year of 1947 when he won the very first Rookie of the Year award, an award that is now named after him, and shows him sliding into home. Jack Peterson hammers the first pitch foul. So appropriate for a guy who 19 times in his career stole home, including the famous one in the 1955 World Championship run, game one of the World Series. Peterson is 0-1 with a walk today and waits on an 0-1. That dips low, one ball and one strike. Action in the Cubs bullpen. Mike Montgomery starts to loosen. You warm up indoors with nice temperature, and then you're shocked when you come through the bullpen door into this temperature. Peterson fooled one and two. And every pitcher that's thrown down there so far says, I feel like I'm throwing 100. Because of the sound? Oh, yeah, it just echoes. Those doors, the metal doors, the, the tall ceiling, all indoors, that padding, it doesn't echo. Or it does echo so much. And you can see out, but you can't see in. It's like that lining they put on the buses for advertising. Mm -hmm. I think that's Chris Hatcher. You can barely see through the green tint. These are the monitors in the dugouts where they're able to watch each bullpen, see who's warming. It's weird, though, to look down the lines here at Wrigley Field and not see bullpens in play. Lackey home with a 1 2. And Peterson turns on it, hits it foul. In removing the bullpens, they've added about 500 more seats, and those are of premium value. Down there, the first three, four rows on each side. That's what it used to look like. The new stadium, it almost looks like, you know, like a replica giveaway of a stadium where they missed a detail. <laughs> it just looks wrong. Lackey's reached 100 pitches. The next one is a 1-2. And it's up on Jock to even the count. Biggest renovations here, though, happening outside the ballpark. New plaza outside the stadium. New office building where the front offices will go. Full count. Up next is a hotel, really high-end hotel they're going to build, and then an apartment building eventually. I hear they're even going to revamp the booth at some point. Look at the press box up here. John Lackey's night nearing an end. His 103rd pitch is a payoff to Jock Peterson. And strike three. His tenth of the game and two gone in the six. So a lot of sliders to left-handers today. Trying to nip that outside corner right there. I'm not sure. So hard for the hitter to wonder if it's going to run as a two-seamer away or come back and catch the corner like that one. The Dodgers had all kinds of traffic over the first couple of innings, but over the last four innings now, the only base runner was Brandon McCarthy on a walk. Strike one on Chase Utley. Chase now one for 14 this year in limited action. Waiting on an 0-1. It's impressive that Lackey's been able to go as deep in this game as he has. He threw 32 pitches in the first inning. It looked like it might be a short night for him. Overhead wind and a 1-1. One -one. Nutley drags it softly to second. Ben Zobris will throw him out. And over the final four innings of his outing, he gives up just one base run.
This fall on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Mary Carey statue outside the center field bleachers. Wrigley Field on a cold night. Temperatures dipping into the low 40s as we move on to the bottom of the sixth. And Brandon McCarthy delivers the first one to Kyle Schwarber. In foul territory, Forsyth. Out of room, strike one. Not nearly as much room over there as there once was. Less and less as they put in more seats. Get rid of the bullpens. New wall, some padding there. And there gets the foul territory is absolutely zero when you get down close to the outfield walls. Yeah, not much, not much there. Overshift on Schwarber for this 1-1 pitch. And he hits it down the left field line foul, one and two. Kyle Schwarber, the former fourth overall pick out of Indiana. You think baseball powers, you don't necessarily think Big Ten in Indiana, but he was the top college hitter in that draft. And made his major league debut one year later. With a monster postseason. And five home runs in that 2015 postseason. Set a big league record for a player of his age. One of those home runs that he hit landed on top of the video board down the right field line. Texas one foul will do it again. And it is actually still there. There's John Lackey. Six innings, and you figure he's finished after the 106 pitches. But anyways, he hit the home run on top of the video board, and they put a plexiglass case over it, and it is still on top of that scoreboard. Here's another one, too, and another foul ball. That was 2015 for him. 2016, one of the oddest seasons a player's ever had. He became the first player in big league history to collect his first hit of the season in the World Series. Blew out his knee second game of the regular season. Breaking ball is low and it's two and two. So he had surgery and then 200 days after his most recent swing got himself ready for the World Series was in the lineup game one. But a week after his six month checkup on his knee, it was impossible that he'd come back. Three and two. First took batting practice trying to come back while the Cubs were playing the Dodgers. It was at Dodger Stadium. Flew right from there to Arizona and played in a couple of Fall League games, a couple sim games over the next week. Took so many swings that his hands were blistered. Three two. And he strikes out swinging to begin the six. They say that he tracked 1,300 pitches. And by track, that doesn't necessarily mean swing, but just watch it out of the pitcher's hand. But 1,300 pitches over a four day span in Mesa, Arizona, just to get his eyes ready to face big league pitching. Hopped on a private plane from Phoenix to Cleveland on a Monday night. And on Tuesday, was in the lineup for game one. Here's Chris Bryant with the Dodgers in front one nothing in the six. One and oh. In the World Series just to put a capper on Schwarber. Seven hits. And three walks and 20 plate appearances having not seen big league pitching in 200 days. Two and oh. McCarthy trying to make it back to back outings going six full. That's just high and it's three and oh. Got the win in his debut last week against San Diego. 
Gave up just two runs over those six innings. Here holding one of the top offenses in baseball off of the board through five and a third. But he's walked Brian on four pitches. Tomorrow on an all new episode of Backstage Dodgers follow Corey Seager as he visits his hometown in North Carolina and you can go all access with him for opening day at Dodgers Stadium He's mic'd up. Don't want to miss Backstage Dodgers presented by Hankook Tires tomorrow at 3 right here on Sportsnet LA. Rick Honeycutt to the phone. Only 83 pitches for Brandon McCarthy who's been efficient. Anthony Rizzo one for two with a single and he grounded into one of the four double plays the Cubs have hit into. Strike one. Ross Stripling. One and one. Nine run aboard for the Cubs here in the six. And McCarthy to Rizzo with a 1 1 offering. Swing and a towering drive to center. Peterson back at the edge of the track to make the catch for out number two. On many other nights, that ball is gone. Not tonight. When coming off of Lake Michigan. And you have to hit it out of a cannon to get it out of here and not this one. This might be a bazooka, but it's not enough. Gives you a lot of confidence as a pitcher. Been a few balls hit tonight that have just not been able to cut through the wind the way Andrew Toll's home run did to lead off the game. With two gone, it's Ben Zobris. And it's 0 and 1. That was the discussion down around the cage pregame. If you're going to get it out of here, it's got to be a much lower launch angle. And in this day and age, with everybody trying to elevate the ball, wrong night to have that approach if you're trying to get it out of here. Dobris one for two. Singlet his first time and then bounce into a double play. McCarthy yet to have a 1 2 3 inning. The Cubs have had exactly one base runner in all six innings tonight. Bryant the man at first. On 1 1, a breaking ball's hit foul, and it's 1 and 2. He earned a spot in the rotation, really four and five in the rotation. We're up for grabs this spring. And he hoped that McCarthy could seize one, and he did. He's been great through two outings. Shanked foul, and it stays at one and two. He said it after it was announced that he'd gotten the final spot in the rotation. If those were my goals, if I thought that was significant, then as a 12 year veteran, I've aimed way too low. The site set on much bigger things, being a part of a postseason run. First and foremost, he'd love to stay healthy. Almost two years removed now from Tommy John. Ready for a one-two. There goes Bryant on a pitch that's up, throw down, not in time. And the Cubs have the tying run in scoring position. Two out. Chris Bryant not known for his wheels, but can run a little bit. 
And with Zobris up there, even if he gets thrown out, they don't mind him leading off next inning. Bryant does a nice job sliding to the right field side. He might have got him. You got to decide within 30 seconds if you're going to have him look at a replay. Whoa. Yeah. Only takes one of the strings of the glove to hit him. I think he got him. Sure looks like it. They are going to review. You're sliding head first. You got to watch out for your fingers so it doesn't make you get real aggressive. You make sure you're cushioning that hand going into the bag instead of aggressively reaching for it. I shouldn't say with such conviction I think he got him because we've seen in this first week that if it's that close it typically stands. to tell from that angle when the glove hits him. He's still not on the bag yet until now. I think that's the best angle. Mm -hmm. He looks out. Definitely. Even when Corey's glove looks like it's following through after the tag, he's not on the bag. So you think this one gets overturned? I hope so. <laughs> I agree with you. I think that the glove did hit him, but the question is, do they see enough in New York to overturn the call, or will it stand? But half of the calls, half of the reviews are overturned. Verdict coming. He's out. And the inning is over. Six shutout innings for Brandon McCarthy and Dave Roberts with a great use of a challenge in a 1 0 game.
you're enjoying Dodger baseball on KTLA presented by Spectrum. As we take a look at the Dodgers calendar after Thursday's game, the Dodgers head back to Los Angeles for a six game homestand. You can see Sunday, Tuesday and Wednesday's games right here on KTLA and Sportsnet LA. Spectrum Sportsnet LA, your place to catch the Dodgers 24 seven. Get Spectrum TV. It's the best ticket in town. Joe and Oral back to you. All right, John and Yasiel Puig leading off the seventh for the Dodgers against Mike Montgomery and taking ball one. Handshakes in the dugout means Brandon McCarthy's night is finished. Six shutout innings for him after getting the win, going six innings in his first outing last week and allowing two runs. A curve and it's one and one. What'd you think of Brandon tonight? Outstanding getting the ground ball, keeping the ball down. The movement was exceptional. When you have that good of movement, even when you miss your spot, it's really hard to hit him. Two and one on Puig. So he's now pitched 12 innings this year and allowed only two runs off of a Will Myers home. Position to win this one on a night where the wind is howling in. A two on to Yasiel Puig. And he hits it on the ground is short. Addison Russell up with it. The Dodgers still looking for their first hit since the second inning. John Lackey was pretty sharp after the bumpy start to the game. Trace Thompson coming up for his first at bat of the season here in the big leagues with Franklin Gutierrez on the disabled list with a hamstring injury. Trace is called up today. And for more on him, down to Alana. Here in Chicago at about 11:30 this morning, and I asked him about the travel. He said, "You know what? When you know that you're going to join the big club and you have an opportunity to play against the World Series champs, the travel is non-existent, not an issue at all. In fact, he showed up today with his old Chicago White Sox bat bag. I said, "Where's your LA bat bag?" He said, "That one's still stuck in LA. He's happy to be here with an opportunity to get this pinch hit. He should be in that starting lineup tomorrow." And trolling the Cubs by bringing his White Sox bag to town. Took ball one. And now it's on Montgomery's 1 0. That's outside 2 0. Trace, a victim of the depth in this organization, starting the season in the minors. Number one, he had options, so it was easier to send him there. He could utilize those options. But number two, they're easing him back from the back injury. 2 and 1. Had the two small fractures in his back midway through last season that shut him down. and didn't do a whole lot until January. So while he looked just fine in spring training, it was a slow ramp up. An easy way to get him some more reps, some more ABs, was to start him in AAA. He knew that this time would come sooner rather than later. A 2 1 delivery to Trace, and he fights it back. The count's even. Let's go back down to Alana. For his first knock of the season, guys, he was 0 for 10 in AAA Oklahoma City. When asked about it earlier today, Dave Roberts said he's still looking forward offensively, getting in the groove there at the plate, but his glove never taken a day off. He's happy that he's here. A 2 2. And Thompson foul tips it into the mitt for strike three. It's 10 straight retired by Cubs pitching, and up comes Andrew Tolls as we look at our Arco top tier play of the game brought to you by Arco and not a tough decision thus far. The only difference in this game, Andrew Tolls' power, you hit this like a line drive. You see, it never gets above the top row of the stands there, so it didn't get beat up by the wind. As two of the Dodgers' four hits tonight, all four coming in the first two innings. Dummy starts him with a strike. In fact, the only base runner since the second is Brandon McCarthy on a walk in the fourth. Looks like the seventh will be Ross Stripling's. Tolls goes up for that one. He's late, and it's 0 and 2. Montgomery acquired midway through last season to help the Cubs with their world championship run over from the Mariners. One and two. A little dribbler. And still one ball and two strikes. 
Well, for being a guy who can't stand weather like this, he sure has looked comfortable at the plate tonight. Much more comfy than him. Bowles waiting on another one, two. It's in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes. Montgomery is Southern California native from Mission Hills. At the high school in Santa Clarita. On the left hander with another 2-2. Two -two. Tolls puts it in play, but Montgomery's waiting on the hill. A 1-2-3 inning. Dodgers bats have gone quiet the last few innings, but the pitching's been spectacular in a one-nothing game. See a Southern California BMW Center today for exceptional offers or visit SoCalBMW.com. And by Jack in the Box. Try the Double Jack Combo for just $4.99. Only at Jack in the Box. Ross Stripling replaces Brandon McCarthy here for the bottom of the seventh. On to face the middle third of the Cubs order. You think they don't have confidence in Ross Stripling? One nothing seventh inning against the world champions after the ring ceremony. He can pitch in any role on this Los Angeles Dodger team. Fourth outing of the season for him, and it begins with the reigning MVP of the World Series, Ben Zobrist. He drops one low, ball one. Ross gave up a run in his debut this year, but in two games since, both in high leverage situations, perfect in one and a third. Going upstairs on one out and yeah, getting strike one. Tobras one for two. He was at the plate when the sixth inning ended with Chris Bryant getting caught trying to steal second. Stripling deals one one and Zobras swings and misses at a change and it's one and two. And McCarthy had great movement on his fastball. Russ Stripling showing the same movement on his changeup. Randall wants it up. Ross gets it there, and Zobras gets a piece. Stripling spent some of his off day walking 
Michigan Avenue doing a little shopping said he wanted to buy something wanted to force himself to you know, Michigan Avenue it's as good a shopping as there is but just couldn't pull the trigger on anything. It wasn't my problem. <laughs> <laughs> One two two and two. Nice group dinner with some teammates last night. Went to a place where you pay a flat rate and then the chef decides what's best and just brings a bunch of stuff out to the group. He's home with a 2 2. And he gets Zobris pulling the string on him for out number one. Starts him off inside right here. Breaking ball, and then he continues through this at bat, just changing speeds, fastballs, and changeups. When he finally gets him out after going back and forth with this, it's not the best changeup in the world, but it's the fact that he really sped him up with the fastball and gets him out front. Now Addison Russell. Elevated fastball, cut on and missed, strike one. Dave Roberts has said. He just simply trusts Ross Stripling in whatever the role is. This is a guy that made his major league debut as a starter early on last year. Now that in two, he had never pitched above double A ball. When he made his big league debut at San Francisco, famously took the no hitter into the eighth inning. And a year later, in a much different but no less important role. Ball wants it outside. Here it comes. Ball one. When Yasmani tapped his three fingers outside like three times, not just putting the sign down, that's like, I want this for a ball. I got to believe they're going to go up the ladder right here. It's a setup pitch. Yep. For this well, one. He's going to go back. Oh, yeah. He wants the fastball up. So did I. It's inside. It's two and two. Now what? With the wind the way blowing the way it is, I think you can go either way. If you go breaking ball, you just gotta make sure he tries to he has to lift it. He's going off speed. And soft contact off the end of the bat. Round out to Chase Utley. Two up and two down. Sometimes any pitch works as long as you execute it. That's what happened right there. He could have went up fastball again. He went slider long way and he executed it perfectly. Looks like a fastball away, two strikes. Got him off the end of the bat, lost his balance. He was protecting from the high fastball and had to just lunge out there to get the slider. So with the bases empty and two gone, Jason Hayward as one of the four Cubs hits today. Goes after the first one, fouls it back, strike one. All four hits for Chicago have been leadoff singles. But four double play ground outs induced by Brandon McCarthy. As big a part of the story tonight as anything. Now it's up to the bullpen. Stripling home with an 0 1. Over the inside edge, strike two. Randall wants the target up, and it buzzes the tower, ball one. Again, setting the target high. And again, missing two and two. Yeah. 
Stripling fires home and Hayward swings and misses strike three. Cut it to the back foot and bookend strikeouts on a one two three seven for Stripling. Com app bat mobile app stay connected to the game's best players all season long using game day and live video highlights radio broadcasts stats news and plenty more you can download it now the number one app for live baseball Dodgers up one nothing on an Andrew tolls home run to start the game two three and four coming up here in the eighth against Mike Montgomery and that means Corey Seager to lead things off. He's one for three tonight. Ball one. Followed Toll's home run with a double. And the Dodgers had a golden opportunity for a big inning in the first, but would leave the bases loaded against Lackey. Similar opportunity in the second, but stranded men at first and second. Two and oh. He would love to get a little more cushion against this offense going into the last two innings. The way this wind is blowing, you're going to have to build an inning. You can't try and do it with one swing. Popped up. Russell. One out. Over the last 25 years, Oral, the Dodgers have had one, one nothing win at Wrigley. And I could give you a thousand guesses, and I bet you'd never guess the winning pitcher. And it's nothing against you. It's just I don't think anybody would guess this. Stephen Fife, the winning pitcher, 2013 over Carlos Villanueva. One nothing win. The only one nothing Dodger win at Wrigley over the last 25 seasons. I wonder if Fife was the starter. Logan Forsythe takes the ball. He was the starter. Yep. One of his 18 major league appearances. He won four games, Fife did, in his big league career. That was the last of them. Here's a 1 0. Upstairs on Logan, two balls and no strikes. Still pitching, by the way, Fife is. He's in the Marlins organization now. Actually, spent last year in the Cubs organization. Triple A. Two and one.
Forsyth 0 for 2 with a walk. Three balls and a strike. And that bit of an early season skid that he's clearly snapped out of at this point. He said he put in extra time studying film and saw that there wasn't really much going on mechanically wrong. Just had to find that feel again. And sometimes early in the season can be elusive. Waits on a 3 1. And takes ball four for his second walk of the night. First base runner for the Dodgers since McCarthy walked back in the fourth. And again, they still don't have a hit since the second. All relative, though. Right now it's enough. Here's Gonzalez. Remember in Colorado, I said you got to take a lead and cut it in half. Yeah. You can multiply this lead. <laughs> Double it. <laughs> in this ballpark tonight. Yeah. Strike one. Zach Lee, by the way, former Dodger, pitched for San Diego today against Colorado at Coors Field in five and two thirds or six inning shutout baseball. Wow. Gonzalez goes to the opposite field. That's a base hit. So a pair of one out base runners for the Dodgers as they look to tack on against the Cubs in the eighth. High and away fastball. Adrian does a good job getting on top of it. It's a ball you can pop up very easily as a left handed hitter. Good hand strength, keeping the barrel above the ball as you see it in flight, because the barrel is going to drop as you go to swing at it. Got five and a third today for Lee, by the way, in his Padres debut, and a 6 0 Padres win. They won the first two against the Rockies. Here's Grandall, and there's ball one. Kicks away from Contreras, but the runners hang on. Luis Avilan starting to warm in the Dodger bullpen. No set rolls down there at this point other than Kenley Jansen is the ninth inning guy. Chris Bazio the pitching coach coming out. Everything else matchup based and you would have said early on that there were two other defined roles. You had Kenley as the closer. You had Alex Wood and Ross Stripling as the long guys. But Alex Wood now in the rotation because of Rich Hill's blister problem. And it feels like Ross Stripling has pitched himself into a higher leverage role already. And I think, you know, it could be like a little totem pole that who's got the hot hand, then also the matchups. Chris Hatcher's been solid his last couple outings, trying to work himself out of the long man kind of mop up role. And he's throwing the ball really well right now. On with one out here in the eighth inning. And Montgomery's 1 0 is low to Grandall. Rich Hill, by the way, is supposed to throw tomorrow back at Dodger Stadium. See how that blisters behaving, and that'll determine whether or not he can make his next scheduled start, which will be Sunday. If not, it'll be Wood again. If you ask Rich, he'll say, I'm ready. Right. And be up to the medical guys when they look at his finger. Here's a 2 0. And that's a little bit high. Let's go down to Alana for another injury update. Guys, Pedro Baez was supposed to go up and down today in Oklahoma City. There was a thought that he might join the team during this series. In fact, he's going to be likely activated on Friday in game one of four against the Diamondbacks back at home. Okay. Pedro suffered a bruised thumb during spring training. And the ball lined off his thumb. Three and one. And they've eased him back. Injury's fine. It's more just now about building him up to be ready. Coming and let it fly. Fastball that's touched 100 on a backfield down in Arizona. The wind 
still really blowing in. Wasn't enough to knock down his line drive homer to lead off the game. It's knocked down everything else. Randall down the right field line foul full count. Dodgers try to set up a rubber match tomorrow. Ryu against Anderson. 120 here in Chicago. That's 1120 back home in L.A. Dodgers return home and open up the set with the Diamondbacks on Friday. That's ball four. The Dodgers have loaded the bases against Montgomery. You got to build an inning and you can't go for the long ball and here comes a, a big bat for the Dodgers out of the dugout. Justin Turner Dave Roberts said before the game would be available to do this. Minor quad injury on Monday night. It was originally thought that it came while he was sliding into second but it was actually a bruise that happened while he was diving for a ball defensively earlier in the game. And obviously a bruise much less concerning than something if it had been pulled. With the low temperatures you never want it to turn into anything worse so Dave Roberts taking the conservative route rested to begin the game but pulling the trigger here in a big spot with the bases jammed in the eight Forsyth Gonzalez Randall Coming inside on the first one. And a throw down to third goes off of Bryant's glove. Forsyth in there safely. And what was called strike one on Turner. Automatically a quick pick going on right there when Justin Turner was taking plenty of time to get loose and get into the batter's box. Time for the Cubs to communicate that pick. Strike. Justin with a little bit of a sore leg, probably thinking about trying to get the ball in the air. I know the wind's blowing in, it's been eating fly balls up, but he's just looking for a sacrifice fly. Hits the ball on the ground, could be an easy double play. And that's the right guy up there to have that strategy. That's how Justin's rebuilt his swing and turned around his career, becoming a guy that focuses on lifting the ball. On 1 1, he hits a ground ball to short. Could be two. And dug out by Rizzo. It is a double play. For the second game in a row, the Dodgers squander a bases loaded opportunity in the eighth.
On Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Land Rover, above and beyond. Kike Hernandez in the game in center after Justin Turner hits for Jock Peterson. We talked about Andrew Tolls hating the cold weather. Kike has told us the same thing unprompted before the game today. From Puerto Rico, they don't deal with too many temperatures in the low 40s there. Ross Stripling out there again for the eighth inning after a masterful one, two, three, seven. Now to face the bottom part of the order, Wilson Contreras. A lot of thunder in that bat. And it'll be Albert Almora in the pitcher's spot. Grandall wants the first one up and strike one. Contreras, who again can hit the ball as far as anybody, has a bunt hit tonight, and he showed bunt on the first pitch there. Again going up. Miss, but got a strike going to. This goes to show you if you stay out of the middle of the plate. <laughs> Same target on all three pitches, one and two. You should have missed again. <laughs> You'd be out. As you pointed out the last time we saw him tap the three fingers to the outside leg he wanted it out there perhaps to set up this pitch. Yep. Still two and two. Wilson Contreras, a 24 year old in his first full major league season out of Venezuela. Leading off the eighth in a 1 0 game. Going fastball again on 2 2. And getting him, one gone. He might have got ahead by missing his target, but he puts him away by hitting his target. And the way that he's mixing speeds at 93 is looking a heck of a lot harder. Put it by Contreras, four up and four down for Stripling. And Albert Elmora Jr. to bat. Rick Honeycutt going to deliver the scouting report to Stripling. If there's anybody that knows how to get hitters out in baseball, it's Rick Honeycutt. Comes to the ballpark, changes his clothes, goes into the film room. Well, stays in the film room until it's time for playing catch and some side works. Then goes back in the film room. Maybe takes a plate of food with him for a little dinner. Then goes and changes a little bit more to get ready for the game close, comes back in into the film room after the game goes into the film room rinse and repeat 162 <laughs> times nobody better and there's a reason so stripling smart guy himself well armed with the information honeycutt delivers and ready to work against the 22 year old albert almora who attacks the first pitch and it's short, it's Corey Seeger. Off of the glove of Gonzalez. Elmora into scoring position. The throw is off target, but a ball that Gonzalez usually catches. Very routine. Adrian stretches out. He's got his tiptoe on the bag, so he knows he can't go any further. And he can't stretch out wider because if he stretches out wider, he loses his height. So there's only so much stretching you can do when you go wide and the throw is high. If it's right over the bag, he can jump up and come down. 
If you're going to throw it wide, you have to throw it low because then you can really stretch out and get it. The air goes on Gonzalez, and the Cubs give it an opportunity here in the eighth. That's a very tough error on Adrian. You would have given it to Seeger? I think I would have. Because of you watch if you watch this footwork and an official score goes back and looks at it again, if he would want to tell me how Adrian's gonna get wider and still be able to reach that ball, it's impossible. He's as wide as he can go. Okay, so he's as high as he can. If he jumps, he's off the bag. If he stretches any further, he's off the bag. If he goes any wider, he loses his height. John Jay takes strike one. Adrian knows exactly what he's doing. If that ball's low, Adrian stretches out even further and goes as, as wide as he can get. But he had to go high and wide. The call by the official scorer is loosening my voice up. That's <laughs> all it took. So the tying run in scoring position, the Cubs trying to do what the Dodgers did on Monday, and that is take advantage of a late inning error to tie the game. There's a throwing error on Addison Russell that allowed the tying run to score Monday before the Cubs won it in the ninth. One ball and one strike on John Jay. If you're on the bench or you're watching your Dodger fan, you start to think, this game doesn't smell good. It's just one of those games where you feel like it should, it should be a wider margin. Been an unbelievable outing by Brandon McCarthy. Ross Stripling is throwing the ball outstanding. Offense has missed a couple opportunities. A 1 1. Two balls and a strike on Jay. Dodgers tonight, to your point, Oral, are 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position and have stranded 8. Stranded 7 in the last three innings, the first game here in Chicago. Bases loaded, no out in the 7th. Jay was one of the heroes Monday night, starting the ninth inning with the double, scoring the winning run. He has Elmora Jr. at second with one gone. And Stripling home with a 2 1 pitch. Two and two on Jay. Can't shake your hand. If, can't shake your head if you're Ross Stripling. You got to pick your teammates up right here. Throwing the ball really well. You're just gonna have to find a way to get the fourth out. And two guys combining to replace Dexter Fowler in this Cubs lineup. Trying to help them cash in to tie it. Almora, who's at second, and Jay, who's at the plate, form the platoon in center now. A couple of guys from Miami. Stripling's ready. The 2 2. Jay in his first season here, one year, $8 million deal. For his eighth big league season that began in St. Louis. Big league career did, then last year in San Diego. He's battled through injuries, mostly lingering wrist problems. Veteran presence for this Cub squad, though. 32 year old steps out as Grandall takes time. Jay was at Game Three of the World Series last year as a fan. And now suiting up in a Cubs uniform. Another 2 2. And a breaking ball, bang foul, do it again. I got to believe here comes the high fastball. Because it also sets up a 3 2 curveball. The first base open. Another 2-2 two -two to Jay. And it is a high fastball, but Jay lays off and the count goes full. We've talked about it before. Sometimes you can take the height, but don't take the whip. The big league hitter, when you don't give him either one, he takes it. What Schwarber do next? I don't mind the 3 2 breaking ball here.
little cut piece. Not a real big one, but just enough to get it off the barrel, get him out front. Just a little cutter, get him out there. The pitch that it would take the most guts to throw right here is the 3-2 curveball. It's the pitch he's thrown the fewest. He's got a lot of confidence in the fastball and the slider. The ninth pitch to John Jay. Fouled off. There will be a 10. Went with a fastball. Grandall wanted it up, and he missed right down the center of the plate. And it shows you how big a hole John Jay might have there in the upper part of the strike zone that when he can miss the one that really is kind of waist high down the middle. He's got a little bit of a collapse on his back leg. Makes him get underneath it. With a tying run at second. One out in the eighth. Randall off to talk with Stripper. Having to empty his bag of tricks against Jay, who's fouled off five pitches, has seen ten. With first base open and one out, it makes it a little more difficult to throw this pitch as far as like if the next hitter, a typical leadoff hitter, was just a singles hitter. But when you have a power hitter like Schwarberg on deck, you're pulling the trigger on something where you could have first and second and one out. Another 3-2. And another foul ball. What a battle with a tying run at second in the eighth between Ross Stripling and John Jay. Young gun against the veteran. Twelfth pitch of the at bat. Strike three called over the outside corner. And Stripling wins this battle. John Lackey threw this pitch an awful lot. That backdoor slider slash cutter, depending how much it breaks. Boy, and he did a nice job just making it creep over there and got the call. On a generous outside corner from home plate umpire Greg Gibson. And the face of Dave Roberts says it all. That trust of Ross Stripling only continues to grow as he keeps it a one nothing game. And Puig opens up the bullpen door to see who's next. Having the tying run at second and Kyle Schwarber do up. I asked Luis before the game as we got off the team bus, you know, what's the changeup like? Your best pitch, the feel in the cold weather. He goes, I don't mind it at all in the cold. Actually, sometimes the hot humidity when the sweat is dripping down your arm, 
it's a lot more risky to throw because the ball gets a little wet and sticky. I don't want it to be sticky. I don't mind it slipping a little bit. Kyle Schwarber not nearly as good against left-handed pitching. And this is live. Tweet coming back out now. Warmed up. Perhaps relieved. Kyle Schwarber to the ditch. So Avilon trying to bridge it from Stripling to Jansen. The Cubs trying, or the Dodgers trying to even this series at one game apiece. A lot of the 40,000 in the house standing. Avilon's first one bounces, ball one. Schwarber tonight is over three. He struck out twice. Bullpen trying to protect Brandon McCarthy. Six shutout innings in position to win this game. Avilon's 1 0. Bottom of the zone for strike one. You're going to keep throwing pitchers pitches no matter what the count is. You got first base open, you got two hitters, even three hitters to get one guy out. And you would hate to get the go ahead run in scoring position. You at least have these two guys, Schwarber and Bryant, to get out. Check swing, strike two. Really no need to throw a strike now. Throw borderline strikes or balls. Hopefully Schwarber will get himself out. Do not give in at all. Elmore Jr. is at second after the year on Adrian Gonzalez. Stripling KJ. Avi lines ahead of Schwarber one and two. Here it comes. And he gets him. Stripling and Avilon. Big time work out of the Dodger bullpen to keep it 1-0. Stays in the game and plays center. And the Cubs bring their third pitcher of the game on. It's Hector Rondon. He's made three outings so far this year. 
He was the closer before they acquired a role as Chapman a season ago and is now in a setup role with Wade Davis in the closers role. Bottom third of the Dodge order. It's up Lee Puig and then the pitcher's spot. Chase looks at one down Broadway, strike one. She's trying to break out here in the early season. Tough to do when you're not in a regular role. Even for a guy as veteran as he, one and one. For the Cubs in the ninth, they'll have Bryant, Rizzo, Zobris. Emily Jansen will have to earn it. One and two on Upland. Series finale tomorrow, 11 20 Los Angeles time. Hunjin Ryu for LA. And the former Dodger, Brett Anderson, for the Cubs. Two and two. Dodgers would love it to be a rubber match. And if it was, it'd give the Dodgers a chance for a 500 road trip. Always the goal. 500 ball on the road. Take care of business at home as they have over the last couple of seasons. On down home 2 2. And Utley takes one that just misses to run it full. Leading off the ninth for the walk and a great take on the 3 2. Sometimes you don't have to get a hit to break out of a slump. You see the ball well enough, get that walk, all of a sudden things start to turn around. So now Puig. Sales one for three today. Scott Van Slyke is on deck. He gets in the game. The last guy in the Dodger bench is Austin Barnes. Ball one. So what you're saying is they uh, better find a way to finish this thing off in the bottom of the ninth. This things could get a little tricky. It would get very tricky. Played Kershaw would be putting his spikes on, thinking he's a pinch hitter. And they lose any. The wind has died down some. It has knocked down a few balls tonight, but not nearly as strong as it was earlier. Contreras and Rizzo both hit balls that on a lot of nights here would have left the yard. Uh, Don to Puig with a 1 0. Asiel hammers it foul, 1 and 1. Lone run if you're just joining us off of the bat of Andrew Tolls on the third pitch of the game. Two on one. There are a few days there. Last two days of the Colorado series, first day of this series, where Puig. Looked like he had taken a step back as far as how he was tracking pitches, but he's looked good again tonight. Let's see what he does on 2 1. Laid off. Smiling over there at Turner Ward. He has been quoted as saying, if I don't get good pitches and swing at good pitches, there'll be no money in my pocket. It's if I don't elevate the ball. <laughs> Is that what he said, yeah. too? I thought it was about good pitches. It's about hitting the ball in the air. 3 1. Pops this one up. Into short right. And Ben Zobra is called off by Hayward for out number one. Whether he makes an out or gets a hit, it's good TV. 
Sure is. He can't help but smile back when you see him flash that smile. And yeah. The reaction that you just saw there, he was watching the replay of his swing on the video board. Didn't like what he saw. He saw the location of the pitch, like elevated and near the middle. He's like, I can't believe I missed that pitch. Van Slyke now in the nine spot. Going tails one in for strike one. Yo, one pitch. The pitcher's pitch there. Van Slyke didn't like it. He's in an 0 2 hole. Like Jansen's warm. And now just pacing himself to be ready in a few minutes. Ball one. The one, two. And he's behind it. Strike three. Hard to come in cold and catch up with 95, and Rondon takes advantage of that. Two gone. And another trip up there for Tolls. Who would have thought he'd be the lone man to conquer the win? With the five Dodger hits tonight, a homer in the first, a single in the second. And a fastball misses in, 1 0. Guy that sat out an entire year away from the game after he was released by the Rays in spring training in 2015. Signed a minor league deal. 2 0. As well covered that he worked at a grocery store for part of that 2015 summer. It's while he was working in the weight room and in the batting cage trying to get another opportunity, but his mom made him get a job and so he went and worked the 4 a.m. shift, making 750 an hour. Pass first and foul, two and one. And Andrew says, I am not a morning person. <laughs> but still is having to get up the earliest shift, stocking the freezers. He'd been working there for about a month when he got the call from Gabe Kapler, who runs the Dodgers minor league system, gauging his interest in signing a minor league deal to play in instructional leagues that fall. And of course, he jumped at it. A 2 1. Bottom of the zone for strike two. Side full count. Chase Utley will be on her way. Corey Seeger on deck. Really no place to put tolls. You don't want to face Seeger. And you know if you go give in to tolls and he hits a double, Utley's got a chance to score. There he goes, and a 3 2 is hit foul. Do it again. Utley reached on a walk to begin the inning. Rondon getting Puig to fly out. Striking out Van Slyke. And now full count on Andrew Tolls. Cubs took the opener 3-2. Dodgers with a 1-0 advantage here in the ninth of game two. He fouls it hard, and it stays at 3-2. Contreras gets this one right.
by his mask and he's begging Greg Gibson for a ball after this like Gibson's gonna give him some time he's like give me the ball give me the ball let's go let's go very enthusiastic young man eighth pitch of the at back coming up to Andrew Tolls there goes Utley and Tolls strikes out swing low throw gets by and of course Chase Utley was flying Here's the throw to the plate. He scores. It's a 2-0 game. And the second run gift wrap to the Dodgers in the ninth. Two drops on one play. One gets by Rizzo. And then Rondon covering can't squeeze it. Petraeus does a nice job picking up the loose ball. Chase Sutley off with a 3-2 pitch. And this ball tolls doesn't get in the way of. He throws a wrong foot throw. I don't know what Rizzo was doing behind the bag. If he's a little bit more out in front of the bag, he catch that ball in the air, but he's behind the bag. And then Utley, he doesn't assume anything. He's watching. Here he goes. And he gets away, and he's like, I need to score. And the only way he does score is if he busts the entire way. He just kept his head on swivel. And he looked for the opportunity when it got away, he continued on. And you see Greg Gibson was ready to punch him out, but clearly the ball wasn't in the glove. Rondon comes out of the game with a trainer. Dodgers get that all-important second run thanks to the hustle from Chase. The Dodgers now in front 2 nothing. Chase Utley scoring all the way from first after Toll strikes out. And you see why Rondon leaves the game after watching this replay. Watch the left leg. It's contorted there. And it'll be it hurt really bad, but it's not going to feel real good to pitch with. And it favors it right there. Throwing air on Contreras, opening the door for the Dodgers to get the insurance. Tolls right in the middle of it again. Not an easy task now for Grimm. Corey Seager would like to tack on another one right here. He's one for four. He's doubled in both games in this series. He's ready. Pitch of his night. Swing and a miss, strike one. You know, Chase Utley, Oral, is one for 15 this year, but you see the value in that one play right there.
Another and two. He could finish the year with an average hovering around the Mendoza line, not drive in many runs, and it would still be well worth a little bit of money the Dodgers invested. Two and he throws 96. Has the tendency to want to go up the ladder. It's something that Corey has to have discipline to lay off of. Going outside. Way up. Ball one. One two. Seeger watches it bounce, and the count evens at two balls, two strikes. How about this note, Oral? The Dodgers, in franchise history, all the way back into their time in Brooklyn, twice have won a game one nothing with a leadoff home run. So it's not going to happen tonight because they got the second run, and it's not happened since 1934. Mm. Where they won a game one nothing with a lone run coming on a lead off homer. Grim deals 2 2. Seeger takes ball three. Ninety eight. Great take. off of second with two gone here in the ninth and Seeger ready for a 3 2 from Justin Grimm and he protects to stay alive 96 that time you see where that thing ricocheted to off the screen and back towards the mound past the mound even more and more netting at big league ballparks all the time and for good reason to protect the fans who are sitting down in some of the hot zones. It was like a trampoline though. And again fouls it off to see another. We've had some serious battles tonight from the three two count on both sides. This battle enters its eighth pitch. Justin Grimm against Corey Seager. Wilson Contreras calling it. Corey chokes up. And another payoff. Tries to lay off. Can't. Rung up by Sam Holbrook down at third. And the Dodgers done in the top of the ninth. They get a run of insurance courtesy of Utley's hustle. Bryant Rizzo and Zobrist against Kenley Jansen. You come back.
McCarthy, six shutout innings tonight in his second out of the year. King of the double play ball. Yeah. Ground ball after ground ball. Somebody gets on, a lot of leadoff hitters did. But he erased them with strikeouts and ground ball double plays. There we go. Him to Stripling. Now Kenley Jansen after Luis Avilon got the final out of the eighth. It's been a bit of a cumbersome start to the year for Jansen. They got him in the third game of the season and he got a save. But since then, two outings, one of them was in a blowout just to get him some work. And then on Monday night in a tie game, when he gave up the winning run on a base hit from Anthony Rizzo. Kenley will attack. He throws some of the most strikes in the big leagues. And he is very, very tough on right-handed hitters. If you go back to 2015 to now, he is the number one pitcher against right-handed hitters. Batting average of 167. With the simplest approach in all of baseball. Throws that cutter more frequently than any other pitcher throws any other pitch. Sure is nice to have that cushion. Now a two run lead as he goes to work against Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, and Ben Zilberts. Cutter over the inside edge, strike one. Nothing in two quickly. 29 year old Kenley Jansen in his eighth major league season. Signed the big five year deal. Wanted to remain a Dodger for the long term into his mid 30s. Despite some bigger offers elsewhere. Going upstairs on an 0 2 to Bryant. Ball one. You know the story, former catcher. He was tiny compared to how he is now when he signed. 6'2, about 175 pounds when he was 17 and signed that contract. 6'5, 250 now. And bringing another cutter that's looped to left. On comes Tolls for out number one. And it was actually the slider that he went to with two strikes on Bryant, something he started to incorporate more. Especially when he sees a team back to back, he might show it if the big lead, but with a two run lead and had a little rough outing against the Cubs, took the L. And here he breaks it out, gets an out. And faces Rizzo, who beat him on Monday. And Kenley said, I mean, what are you going to do? Threw a good pitch. It was a little bit up, but nine times out of ten, that cutter gets by. And in this case, Rizzo won it with a blue pit to left. Could hit it a mile here, and the Dodgers would still lead. Ball one. Rizzo had eight home runs last April, still looking for his first one of this season. Here's the 1 0 pitch. And a jam shot into center, a base hit. The Cubs have the tie and run at the plate in the ninth. Rizzo uses a very short bat. He also chokes up. Gives him the ability to kind of pull those hands in quickly. Even though he gets jammed, he gets enough barrel on it. Last night did a good job on one inside like this and forcing it down the left field line. This one started a little earlier and got it out to right field. So now Zobris, who's homered twice this season, representing the tying run with one out in the ninth inning. And a pop-up. Will it stay in play for Grandall? Two gone in the ninth inning. Jansen gets Zobris on the first pitch, and it's up to Addison Russell. You can guess cutter off Kenley Jansen and you can guess strike because he throws about 85% strikes this year. Really attacking. Zobris guess fastball cutter. Got it up. 
Zobris pops it. So Russell now the man representing the tying run. All that's standing between Kenley Jansen and his second save of the year. Bought the first one up. Inside one and up. And Rizzo takes second and the fielder's indifference. Russell a season ago an all-star. 21 home runs. Without a homer so far this year. And again, the wind continues to blow in. The one on. Strike one. Cubs tonight 0 for 12 with men on base. How large did the surround that Utley scored on the top of this inning loom now? Towering drive to left. Tolls went back at first. Now comes on, settles under it, and puts an end to a gem from the Dodger pitching staff. Six for McCarthy. Then it was stripling for one and two thirds. Avilon with the final out of the eighth. And Kenley Jansen with a scoreless ninth and a 2 0 win. Dodgers set the tone early. The first batter, Andrew Tolls. And then Brandon McCarthy sets the tone on the defensive side, getting all the ground balls. And they break and make this series even. Set up a chance at a series win tomorrow and a 500 road trip. 11 20 first pitch back in Los Angeles. Hung Jin Ryu against Brett Anderson. Carolina and Oral Joe Davis saying so long from Ridley. Stay tuned after the game for Access Sports Now brought to you by your Southern California Nissan dealers.